Welcome back to the Wastewater Enthusiast. Got to change some uh, seal and bearing oil in a Gorman Rupp trash pump. We use them as EQ transfer pumps here at the plant. But before I do that, I need to make sure it's turned off on SCADA and on the local handoff auto switch, which is what you just saw. And next, I got to make sure it's locked out and tagged out. Come on over. This is gonna be a quick safety minute. I wanted to talk to you about locking out and tagging out real quick. I have to do some work on these pumps, but if I step away from the pump and have not locked out the electrical disconnect and another operator comes by and sees that it's off and doesn't know why, turns it back on and I don't know, and I come back and start working on it again and it turns on, I could get hurt, I could get killed. It depends on what I'm doing. Also, for the life of the equipment, it's important because if say that doesn't happen, but I get called out on another job and I haven't locked out my stuff and there's no oil in the pump um, and nobody knows why the pump is off. They turn it back on and they burn up the bearings and the seals. And now we have a costly repair on our hands. So lockout tag out has a lot of uses, but don't let me tell you how your shop runs it. You should have access to your injury and illness prevention program. That is something that should be accessible to everybody. And in there, you should have your lockout tagout procedures. If you're unsure, talk to your supervisor or your shop's safety officer. Okay, so I'm gonna get working on this. I'm not gonna bore you with some oil change. Every pump's different anyway. You should consult your O&M manual if you're doing any maintenance on a pump. But uh, today we're gonna be talking about the overview of the treatment process. And we're going to do, I think, the most important math problem that you need to know for your exam and for your job, and that is the pounds formula. Come on, let's take a look. Preliminary, primary, secondary, and tertiary are all forms of wastewater treatment. Preliminary and primary are mostly physical, screening out large debris and settling out easy to settle solids using gravity to lower the BOD loading on the biological secondary treatment. Secondary treatment is, as I just said, biological, where we have engineered media full of natural occurring bacteria that consume waste into one location where we can take care of it and move it out into the environment. Anything beyond secondary treatment is considered tertiary and can be chemical, biological, or physical, depending on what you are trying to accomplish. Now that we've gotten through the different stages of wastewater treatment, let's move over to the SCADA screen so that you can see it in a more linear fashion. Okay, so I've zoomed my camera in on our main plant SCADA screen. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. You need to know that. This is the brain of the plant. What you're seeing is the interface. You might also be asked about an HMI, the Human Machine Interface. So you're seeing the interface with the machine here. This is a graphical user interface. The actual brain is in a cabinet somewhere. I'm not gonna get into that. We'll do a, a whole video on SCADA at one point. So I just wanna take you through these processes real fast. We have a second SCADA program for a separate plant within our plant. I'm not gonna show you that, just trying to keep this video brief. Influent wet well, there's chopper pumps in there that chop up things and move it on to the primary clarifier. We do have to pull those pumps. There's no preliminary treatment before this. So we pull those pumps fairly frequently. In our other plant, there are micro screens. So there is preliminary treatment in our other plant. I'll show you that at a later time. Primary treatment is physical in this situation. The insoluble BOD settles out, the settleable solids settle out, and then it moves on to the next process. You'll see fixed film reactor. It's a fancy way in this situation to call it a trickling filter. We'll get into all that terminology at a later time. So this is our biological process in this part of the plant, secondary treatment. And then it goes through some recirculation, some more clarification, and then it moves on to tertiary treatment, which is our disinfection in this situation, okay? Fear not those of you who know what's going on right here. <laughs> These are ORP readings. They are not concentration readings. So I don't have 700 part per million chlorine. That is a millivolt read. My parts per million in the contact chamber is probably around a two right now, free available. Um, mostly the plant is putting out denitrified effluent right now uh, with, with very little chlorine demand. That's why you see such a great number. And that is also millivolts. Uh, this is our dechlorination system. I will get into all this technical stuff at a later time. I don't want to confuse you, but you can see 
primary, secondary, tertiary. In our other plant, we have preliminary through microscreens, and we have a physical form of tertiary treatment, membrane filtration. And we have also a biological form of tertiary treatment through nitrification and denitrification. And in here, we have chemical tertiary treatment through chlorination and dechlorination. So you can see you can have three different types of tertiary treatment. It can be physical, chemical, and biological. Primary clarification and preliminary treatment is typically physical, and secondary is always biological. Okay, so that was real quick. I'm super excited to move on to the next and biggest part of this video, and that is doing the pounds formula. Let's dig into this and start doing some math. Let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, the pounds formula. What you see in front of you are called Davidson Pies. They were created to help operators like me who do not want to do algebra every day easily solve for pounds per day. Um, so let us all collectively thank Mr. Davidson for making our lives so much more easy. How you solve these things are on the bottom, you're gonna see a flow rate or a volume you're going to see a unit of weight and you're going to see a unit of concentration. You multiply across the bottom to get pounds per day on the top. Conversely, if you're trying to solve for a concentration or a flow, you're going to take that number on the top and divide by the bottom. We're going to get to that in a second. First, let's go over some concepts here, some, some units and some constants. Like I said in the last video, one part per million equals one milligram per liter. Burn that into your brain. I know on my exams, they flip flop. I'll go, I'll have one question. So question number 10 says, you know, all in parts per million, all the concentrations. And then question number 11, all of a sudden it's milligrams per liter. So you need to just know they mean the same thing. Okay. That is a unit of concentration for the Davidson pie. It must be parts per million. If you find in a more advanced test that you're in parts per billion, you need to get it moved over to parts per million. We're not doing that today. <laughs> that's a little, that's a little intense. Uh, for, for entry level. One gallon of water weighs 8.34 pounds. Burn that into your brain. I don't care if it's flashcards, doing transcendental meditation. I don't care how you remember that, but just say that over and over and over again. One gallon of water weighs 8.34 pounds. That is an important number. One cubic foot of water contains 7.48 gallons. So a one foot by one foot by one foot cube will hold 7.48 gallons of water. That is another constant that you need to know. We're not gonna be using that number here, but just I'm, I'm, I'm slowly introducing you to things that you're gonna be needing later. So 8.34 pounds in a gallon, 7.48 gallons in a cubic foot of water. Okay, why I want you to memorize these, by the way, you're gonna use these at work. You're gonna use these on the exam. You are timed on your exam and given a conversion sheet. So you don't have the time to look up numbers like this on your exam if you're being thorough. Use that conversion sheet to look up complicated trans, you know, conversions like acre feet. That's not a number that I've ever committed to memory. Acre feet to gallons, I'll look that one up. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different equations on there too that you can use. Save, save your brain space for those, or sorry, save your time for those. Use your brain space on these two. They're very helpful. Okay, next, flow. Flow is in million gallons per day. So that's a unit of volume per unit time flow. So million gallons per day or volume, million gallons in this situation. You can use them both right there. So like say you're dosing a tank, you need to know million gallons or say you're dosing a stream, you need to know million gallons per day. We'll get more into that stuff as we go on, but, but for the operators that are intermediate or higher level, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, I've made really simple math here. Uh, this is probably going to be, <laughs> this actually looks more like a uh, drinking water treatment uh, math equation, but it's all the same. So it's just, it's just smaller numbers. I'm using it for the ease of, of the math. You don't need so many decimal places right now as you're just getting used to the pounds formula. So what we're going to do is say we've got 5 million gallons per day or million gallons coming into the plant or in a basin. The weight of water is 8.34 pounds and our concentration of whatever it is, it could be BOD. I mean, two parts per million BOD is pretty low, but that's more of a final effluent number. But, uh, you know, it could be a chlorine dose, it could be a polymer dose, it could be all sorts of stuff. Um, but it, whatever concentration it is, goes right there. So 5 times 8.34 times 2. How many pounds per day of whatever they're asking for here 
is it? So I'm gonna pause the video. Go ahead, you pause. Work it out on your calculator. I'm coming back, I'm gonna write it. If you're ready for me to write it, hopefully you are. 83.4 pounds per day of whatever, okay? Um, I think people do this equation and when they teach it, they talk about it in BOD. Just, or they talk about it with chemical dosing. Just know it is, when you've got million gallons and you've got a concentration in parts per million, it could be Frisbees. I don't care what it is, but you're gonna know how many pounds per day you have. Um, it, it's, it's so useful. This shows up so much. That's why I'm so adamant about everybody learning this equation first. Reverse pi. You will also sh see on your exams that they will give you the pounds per day. And they'll give you the flow or the concentration and ask you to get either the flow or the concentration. So in this version, I've given you pounds per day, the flow or volume, and I wanna know the concentration. So how you do this one, instead of multiplying across to get the number, you take that number and you divide, then divide. So divide across, or if we're going the other way, you would divide across, okay? So um, get your calculator out, 185 divided by 10, divided by 8.34, work that number out, Pause the video. I'm gonna write the number, be ready for it. So hopefully you got two point, my marker, two, 2.2 2 parts per million. That is how you solve the reverse Davidson pi. Okay, so I hope that helped. Um, please leave any questions about this in the comments below. I am trying to be as concise as possible. I may have left some people behind, it's not my intent. Uh, any questions at all, please, please ask, and I am super happy to help you out. All right. So that's all I have for you today. I'm trying to keep these videos somewhat short. The pounds formula was kind of a long segment, but it's very important for you to know. Please go over this information over and over again if you're taking an entry-level exam. Also, please like and subscribe. This helps the YouTube algorithm know that this is good content and it'll get it to people who are looking for it. So if you found any value in this at all, please like and subscribe. Also, if you have any questions, clarifying questions, concerns about the content, um, anything at all, please put it in the comments below and I will be happy to answer any questions. Uh, there is a ton of content just at my plant alone that's gonna keep me busy for some time. So just the, the next videos that are coming out, there are gonna be more you know, about the exam and about being a wastewater operator, but there's gonna be primary clarifier, secondary uh, treatment. There's gonna be very specific content coming about out about each process. So please stay tuned and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.